so what is cannabis? Um, it, it, it's a plant. It comes in three varieties, sativa, indica, and ruderalis. Sativa is essentially something that comes from the, the Asian environment. Indica comes more from the, the southern Asian environment. And ruderalis is, is a shorter plant that, that is um, more more medical use. Cannabis contains substances called cannabinoids. Um, I updated this presentation this morning and had to change what was previously 66 plus cannabinoids to 100 because that's how fast the science is developing. It was only a few months ago, a couple of months ago, people believed there were about 66 cannabinoids. We now believe there are about 100 plus. There are also in cannabis things called terpenoids and things called flavonoids and other aspects. But all these things have an effect. I mean, it's, it's, you know, we don't really fully understand how they all have an effect, and we don't fu really fully understand which, which are the key ones. But the key cannabinoids, which you will probably have heard of, are THC, or tetrahydrocannabinol, and CBD, or cannabidiol. Um, but these are, these are the CBN, CBB, THCV, and CBC cannabichrome are, are recognized as being important ones. And, and, and increasingly, we're beginning to understand the various subtle effects they have and the way they interact and work together. All right, I mentioned the endocannabinoid system, and this is perhaps, you know, if there's one piece of information that I'd like you to take away from tonight, it's this, because this is crucial. Dr. Raphael Mechelam is an Israeli doctor, and he discovered, in 1964, he synthesized for the first time THC, which he recognized as being the substance within cannabis that created the high. And then in 1988, he discovered the CB1 and the CB2 receptors, which are in the brain and which spread throughout the body. These are receptors which the, 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 the cannabinoids lock, lock onto. And in 1992, he identified in the body endocannabinoids called anandamide and 2-AG. And anandamide is chemically equivalent to THC, and 2-AG is chemically equivalent to CBD. So these are substances that we produce naturally in our body. We now know, for instance, that you know we used to talk. People used to talk about the high you get when you do exercise or you go out running. People used to say it was the release of endorphins. We now know, in fact, it's the release of endocannabinoids. So that buzz you get from exercise is, in fact, being produced by a chemical in your body, which is chemically identical to the chemical you find in the cannabis plant. And the endocannabinoid system exists in mammals, fish, reptiles, and birds. It controls pain relief, sensation, appetite, taste. We, the, the, the gastrointestinal system, the central nervous system, the reproductive system, the immune system, all these systems we now know are regulated by cannabinoids. It's fundamental to all aspects of life. And the extraordinary thing is that the only source of cannabinoids outside the body is the cannabis plant. Now you might say, this is why it really is something that can benefit so many different conditions and problems. And there's a doctor, Donald Abrams in the States now, who is researching very deeply into, into something called endocannabinoid deficiency, where many of these problems are actually caused by a deficiency that some of us have in our, in our endocannabinoid system, which can be rectified potentially through the use of cannabis or through extracts of cannabis. So this, this is a hugely significant thing, and it really explains why cannabis has been used by, 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 by mankind for over 5,000 years. You know, I mean, over that period of time, if it wasn't working effectively, you know, mankind would have worked that out and would have stopped using it. If it was causing problems over that period of time, mankind would have worked that out and stopped working. So this really explains, this is how modern science explains why the cannabis plant is, is, is the miracle that it is. In terms of its medicinal properties, it can be an analgesic, it can, it can, affect pain, it can moderate pain, and CBD is the cannabinoid most, most well known for that. Antispasmotic. I mean, I, I, uh, you will have heard of cannabis being used to treat MS, and that's undoubtedly the condition in which it's most well known. Um, and spasticity, um, or, or, or spasms in, TS, in, in, in MS, where 
you, you, you get uncontrollable movement of the limbs. It's extraordinary, and I've seen it with my own eyes many times now, of people who really can't get around at all, can't even get out of a chair, well, we'll have, um, we'll, we'll smoke just a little tiny piece of cannabis, perhaps just one, one inhalation, as it were, and suddenly they can move around normally. Um, it's remarkably, for all the nonsense you hear about cannabis causing psychosis, cannabis is also proved to have anti-psychotic properties. It's anti-inflammatory, can reduce swelling and pain. Anti-cancer, there's, there's, there's a lot of hype about cannabis and cancer, but it is true that experiments have shown, in vitro and animal experiments have shown, that THC kills cancer. And we know about the marijuana munchies, as they're called, appetite stimulants. However, despite all this, both the UK and the US government say that cannabis has no medicinal value. You might, you might think, how absurd can that be? And what hypocrisy it is. In the UK, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency have now approved Sativex. Sativex is a whole plant extract of cannabis. It's made by taking cannabis, two particular strains of cannabis, one's a sativa strain and one's a ruderalis strain, chopping it up, mixing it up with, a, with, with an extraction substance, which in fact is, 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 liquid, is dry ice, is liquid, carbon dioxide and heating it gently under pressure, same thing can be done with alcohol, then they add a little ethanol to it and it precipitates an oil. And so what you have effectively is concentrated liquid cannabis and that's what Sativex is. And this has been approved by the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency and yet the UK government still says cannabis has no medicinal value. In fact at the moment the, the, under the Misuse of Drugs Act they're having to reschedule Sativex. It's currently in Schedule 1, which is the schedule that says it has no medicinal value. And they're having to reschedule it in order to comply with what the MHRA says. And they say they're going to reschedule it in such a way as to distinguish it from cannabis. But in fact, there is no distinction between it and cannabis. So this is a real difficult problem for the government and something which we, we don't know what's going to happen. In the US, they say the same thing. It has no medicinal value. Yet in 2003, I think it is, the US government registered this patent. Alzheimer's disease. THC has been proven conclusively to slow down the rate of progression of Alzheimer's disease faster than any currently approved prescription medicine. And just as an indication, there is peer-reviewed scientific research on every single one of these conditions demonstrating the effectiveness of cannabis. And yet all the time, the US and the UK government say there is no medicinal value. So coming back to Sativex, it is a scam. I mean, I, I have mixed feelings about GW Pharmacies with the, the makers of Sativex because, I mean, you know, I, I can only admire the fact that they are the first people to have brought the benefits of cannabinoid medicine to markets. And they did it, firstly, by making massive donations to the Labour Party, which then resulted in the Home Office giving them a unique licence. It's almost certainly unlawful. They're the only people in the country provided with a licence to grow approximately 20 tonnes of cannabis every year. Most of it's grown, I understand, in where? On an industrial sort of Kent Science Park near Sittingbourne. Oh, that's, that's the point. <laughs> but Sativex has all been promoted with a white lie. Well, I call it a white lie. And that is, the white lie is that it isn't cannabis. What, 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 what GW have gone out and promoted is the idea that Sativex is an extract of THC and CBD. But it isn't, and if you, bur if you bur burrow down into it, and if you actually ask direct questions, if you've even gone on the GW Pharmaceuticals website, you will find out that it isn't an extract of THC and CBD. THC and CBD may be the two principal chemicals in it, but it contains everything else that naturally occurs in the plant. Sativex is sold at approximately 10 times the price the cannabis is sold on the streets. So in other words, what organized crime actually charges you to go out and buy a bit of weed? GW Pharmaceuticals is an even bigger criminal. It's charging you 10 times that much. 
And what about psychosis? What about this idea that cannabis causes psychosis? Well, if that was true, you'd think that on a bottle of Sativex, there'd be a great big warning saying, warning, may cause psychosis. The, the, the latest thing that's happening about Sativex is it's just been introduced uh, for the treatment of cancer pain in a number of hospitals in Manchester. And about, what, about a month ago now, there was a whole series of articles in the national press saying that, that announcing the fact that Sativex was being used to treat cancer pain and saying, it doesn't give you a high. This was the big headline in the Sun, the Daily Mail, the Mirror. It doesn't give you a high, but it helps with the pain. If you actually look in the statutory, pro the st the statutory document called the SPC, the Summary of Product Characteristics, and you look down, you know, go through all the page, page, page after it, in, in adverse events, commonly, euphoric mood. <laughs> so, so when it actually comes to where they have to tell the truth, with well, the statutory document where they have to tell the truth, it tells you it gets you high. <clears throat> but when they come to actually marketing it and speaking to the press, they tell you it doesn't. So is cannabis safe? The most critical thing is there's never been a single death recorded anywhere in the world as a result of using cannabis. And this relates to what I was saying earlier on. The therapeutic ratio is a scientific term that measures the toxicity of a substance. And it, the, the ratio is about the effective dose to the lethal dose. So the effective dose to the lethal dose of alcohol is 1 to 20. You, know, you drink one unit of alcohol, but if you drink 20 units of alcohol at once, potentially it can kill you. Same with aspirin. Take one aspirin, fine. Take 35 aspirin at a time, it'll kill you. Cannabis is at least 1 to 20,000. Another indication of safety. In 2009, there were over a million admissions to hospitals as a result of alcohol. There were 3,000 admissions to hospitals as a result of peanuts. <laughs> there were 750 admissions to hospital as a result of cannabis. <laughs> Ma mainly panic attacks. Oh, yeah. so the risk of psychosis, which is the big thing that the tabloids love, right? Alcohol is proven to cause psychosis in 1 to 2% of all users. You see something called Korsakoff syndrome. It's where it can, it, what in fact is to do with its time and deficiency, where the alcohol prevents you from absorbing the medicine. So it's actually proven to cause it. In tobacco, 80 to 90 percent of people diagnose schizophrenic smoke cigarettes. I'm not saying this tobacco causes the psychosis. But that's, in terms of cannabis, the correlation and, this, and these figures. Okay, these figures are not cherry picked. I haven't gone and found out the best study that I can to suit my case. What I've done is looked at a study by uh, Professor Glyn Lewis at the University of Cardiff, where what he in fact is called a systematic review, where in fact what he did was he took all the published research on the subject and averaged it out. And the fact is that the worst, the risk of a single instance of psychosis from the use of cannabis is 0.013%, and it's more likely to be something like 0.003%. So in other words, in order to stop one instance of one instance of psychosis, you'd have to stop 30,000 people smoking it ever in their life. Now in terms of lung damage, which is the other popular thing, extraordinarily enough, the biggest study of its type ever done by Dr. Donald Tashkin at the University College Los Angeles showed that not, he, he looked at people who'd been smoking cannabis neat, smoking cannabis with tobacco, and people who just smoked tobacco. And people who smoke cannabis with tobacco get less lung cancer, fewer lung cancers, and less COPD than people who smoke tobacco alone. And people who smoke cannabis neat get even fewer cancers and less COPD than that. And what he concluded, and this man started out as a skeptic. Right, he started out, you can, read, you can read all about it, he started out believing that cannabis was going to be much more damaging to the lungs. But the conclusion he actually, actually came to was that there was no association between the use of cannabis and lung cancer or COPD. And in fact, what it appeared to do was provide some protective effect. So moving back to the financial thing, we, we published last month, on the 14th of September, we held a press conference in the Houses of Parliament. 
and we published a study which we commissioned from an independent research organisation called Taxing the UK Cannabis Market. So these figures that you have here, these are the most up-to-date up figures there are. There are 3 million people using cannabis regularly. It's between daily and monthly. There are 300,000 people in this country growing their own cannabis. It costs about half a billion a year. The criminal justice system just for cannabis costs about half a billion pounds a year. It's a £6 billion market, which at the moment is just gifted to organised crime. They say, we don't want anything to do with it. It's illegal. Let the criminals get on with it. There's no protection for children at all from the current situation. The only ID that a child needs is a £20 note. As I've already shown, the health risks are hundreds of times less than alcohol or tobacco. One of the great harms of, can of cannabis or of cannabis prohibition is the, uh, are the cannabis farms, where they're destroying property. People are being, you know, Viet Vietnamese, typically people are being human trafficked in to act as gardeners. There was a case only last week in Cambridge um, where uh, some, some poor chap who's been in prison for two years already and is now about to be deported. They now discovered, in fact, that the UK Borders Agency had identified him as a victim of human trafficking in the first place. Despite that, we sent him to prison for two years and now, we want that, and now, now we're going to deport him back to Vietnam. So, tax and regulate provides control. We, the, the, the proposal we put forward actually suggests the introduction of a cannabis inspectorate, which in itself will generate something like 2,000 new jobs. Um, looking at providing home licenses for home growers, etc. And on a conservative estimate, we did this, and if we introduced a tax of approximately one pound per 5% THC level on cannabis, it would produce a net benefit to the UK economy of six point seven billion pounds per annum. Now that is three times the entire international development budget. You know, so this thing where we talked we talked recently about the fact, you know, I mean and it is a noble thing I suppose that the coalition government has decided to maintain the international development budget is the but this is three times that budget. And they could do that almost tomorrow, just with a stroke of the pen. Not only would we benefit from the 6.7 billion, it would also reduce all the health and social harms associated with it. So, these are the aims and objectives of CLEAR. First of all, to end the prohibition of cannabis generally. Secondly, and then the order of these is important. You know, you, you, I've explained to you my reasoning already tonight. You know, the second, as a matter of urgency and compassion, we must allow people who need cannabis and medicine to have it. Thirdly, to introduce a system of regulation based on facts and evidence, hemp, and, and, and a general education. The way we're doing that is we're, we're, we're trying desperately to work through the celebrity arts and entertainment world. There are many, many people, you know, m most, most music that we listen to these would not have been created without, uh, without the help of, of a little bit of weed. <laughs> co comment, comment, warriors is something, co co comment warriors is something we do. You know, every single day there are stories in the press, particularly about cannabis farms. And what we do is on our Facebook page, every single time they come out, we put it up there and we ask people to go onto the newspaper website I make a plight intelligent comment. And if you go on them now, and I'm proud of this, I really am proud of this, you go on any newspaper anywhere in the country, any time there's a cannabis story, there's clear members up there commenting, telling people the truth. And it's not going to, you know, I'm not, I don't suggest that's going to have an immediate effect, but, we, but, but, you know, we've been doing it for over six months now, and when we've been doing it for a year and two years, it impacts on newspaper editors, it impacts on journalists, anyone who goes to see again and again and again. Uh, I, I believe that that's going to work. We will run election campaigns, as I mentioned earlier. Legal Remedies is a campaign we're running where we've now got approximately 30 people who are medicinal cannabis users. Well, we've got, we had them go to their own doctor. We've had their own, their own doctor has provided them with, with written uh, support. So uh, it, it varies from doctor to doctor. Some are very supportive, some are less supportive. But then in addition to that, what we've done is we've identified doctors in Europe one in Germany, one in Holland, and one in Luxembourg, who are prepared to write prescriptions. So what we, what we, what we plan to do is to get these, these 30 people prescriptions. And then what we're going to do is they're going to apply to the Home Office for a license to import medicinal cannabis from Holland.
where it's produced under government auspices. And the Home Office is going to say no. And we're then going to take the Home Office to, judi to judicial review. So we're going to take them through the courts. And there are various other comp press complaints. Commission is something I spend far too much time on. But I mean, I have, I have, I have sworn, I have vowed that every single time there, is, there are untruths and they happen every day, printed about candidates in the newspapers, I will call them to account. And we've made something like 40, kept 40 complaints already this year. The truth about cannabis is clear. Thank you very much for listening.